as an electronic hobbyist, you'll need a selection of tools for soldering and small electrical work. There are many different tools available for you to choose from, but I will just cover a few of the basic necessities. To prepare a solder joint, you will need a decent pair of pliers and a pair of cutters. These two items are quite important and should be chosen with care. Pliers should ideally be flat-nosed and are capable of gripping a thin strip of paper. These will be used for forming component leads and even as a device for diverting heat from sensitive component wire leads. Wire cutters should be tempered steel and have a diagonal cut so that you do not touch the static sensitive components on a printed circuit board you're working on. Straight cutters should only be used when you are cutting wires, but they could never be used on a printed circuit board. You can also get end cutters and these are ideal for assembling circuit boards with a high component density. The soldering irons used for light electrical work should be around 10 to 25 watts and have a preset temperature of about 300 degrees centigrade for normal electronic work. If you intend to work on boards with bonded paper then the temperature should be restricted to around about 240 degrees to prevent damage to the board or the wire. A good cheap soldering iron for hobby use is the Antex iron which has iron coated bits as standard low leakage resistance and all the components are readily available and replaceable. Iron coated bits have a longer life than simple copper bits since solder dissolves copper. The Antex solder and iron only costs around $15 or so. The amateur constructors Rolls Royce of the soldering world is made by Weller and Weller irons start from about $50, but a good iron with variable temperature can cost typically $100 or more. As far as tools go, the iron is perhaps the most important tool. So it is well worth spending a little bit if you intend to do any serious electronic work. The cheap $5 soldier iron with a two-pole contact should be avoided like the plague. They're almost useless. If you buy an Antex or any other iron that is not temperature controlled, then you can actually regulate the temperature using an ordinary lamp dimmer intended for mains operation. You will soon get a feel for the temperature range. Incidentally, this technique can also be used to take an iron temperature to about 170 degrees centigrade where solder does not melt. The iron can remain almost hot like this for many hours or even days and the temperature can be brought up to a working temperature in just a few seconds and this will preserve the life of the irons bit. There are also butane gas and battery powered soldering irons but these should be used when you've gained a little bit more experience with conventional soldering. If you have not yet got the feel for temperature, then you could easily damage a board with a gas iron. They can get very, very hot indeed. The soldering iron will also need to be cleaned using a moist sponge. This is used to clean the bit prior to soldering. You just give it a quick wipe. You can also use a sort of stainless steel wool, but this is abrasive and can damage the iron coating on the iron's bit. You will also benefit from several small items, such as a good, clean bit of dry cloth. A dry cloth can be used to wipe excess molten solder away from a joint or a solder pad on a printed circuit board. A pencil rubber or eraser with a razor cut in it is an ideal tool for cleaning component leads before soldering. A large and small bulldog clip used as a heat shunt is another good tool. 
the only other necessary tool is the solder sucker or solder pole. It's got very many names. This is a sort of spring-loaded tube that sucks excess molten solder from a joint. Do not be tempted or persuaded to buy this solder braid. Unless you are very experienced, the braid can easily ruin a board with surprisingly little effort. For electronic work, you will need the usual small tools, such as light screwdrivers, instrument screwdrivers, and a multimeter. But these have got little to do with the actual soldering that I'm going to be showing you. There are many other tools that you may need from time to time, but you will just find out as you go along. I will show you the basics of soldering without any fancy luxury equipment. You will, however, need some sort of static dissipating work area. This I will cover in my next film.